mm -hmm. back to, to the local we are going to drag and make another copy of it rename this to points okay this will just be or rather let's call it target points okay now in here all we have to do again is make uh let's see solid so layer layer new solid mm -hmm. again white in color okay yeah this have to be these are going to be very easy we just do that at first mm -hmm. and then uh, let's see control d to duplicate because this one goes down mm -hmm. and uh, hmm, let's see no let's actually do the following way select that let's just delete that let's make another solid okay yeah just scale it down at first like that mm -hmm. and then edit duplicate press rotation and of course this is going 90 degrees okay and then we're going to create a let's see no this one to work i believe let's try this select the first one double click to create a mask double click again inside the mask and yeah they, they just crunch it down like that and of course that side as well to be, bring it to the middle mm -hmm. press first press mm select the mask and then we're going to tell it to subtract you see that now of course it leaves an empty layer in between and that's exactly what we want okay of course we're going to select the mask go to edit copy select our other layer and then we go to edit paste yeah you see that just like that also it cuts out this layer here then of course select the lock on layer and hit delete perfect let's go to the main comp and drag the target points there of course this has to be scaled down mm -hmm. you can see of course for yourselves the space it occupies and this has to be really a bit smaller than that and mainly let's go to the target points these objects have to be thinner so press the scaling for that and that okay and for these we're going to unlock the lock there for the width we're going to enter three yeah this one here too of course three great so that of course they're thinner now main composition again there we go as you can see of course now they're much thinner just the way we want them to be you see that eh? and something tells me they have to be even thinner than this so let's go to the main comp sorry to the target points mm -hmm. so that has to be 1.5 for the width same as that 1.5 great main comp yeah now they're much thinner of course uh let's see the other thing was let's just go back to the lock on layer here and I believe this has to be a bit thicker than this or these layers have to be a bit thicker than this so let's just bring them a bit in more okay starting with that and of course continuing with the rest of them just to give them more width yeah great main comp yeah now of course they are much more noticeable yeah you see that eh? target point again make it maybe seven percent yeah that's no that's too small uh perhaps what needs to happen actually is the following when we're in here yeah we're going to select press mm to bring up the mask mm -hmm sorry
there we go mm -hmm. let's drag these hands of course towards the edges as you can see me doing main comp just to check yeah that seems to be what we need to do okay perfect let's go back to it target point mm -hmm. again click the mask go to edit copy let's go to the second one press mm select the mask delete and of course we go to edit paste there we go back to main comp yeah now of course we are talking so of course it can be spread out slightly more yeah because they should really not affect what our target can see yeah that's much better okay although you might want to make it maybe eight percent yeah that seems to work even better okay and then we need an additional layer to sit on the bottom there so for that of course we're going to create a new composition 1500 by 1500 just call it um navigation or additional additional uh, plate okay yeah and in here it's simple we're simply going to create solid to start with yeah scale it down make it wider mm -hmm. double click to create a mask Double click on this mask point and just bring them under control as you can see me doing. Okay. Press MM and of course we're going to tell this mask to subtract. Yeah, like that. And uh, uncheck the control point there for the scaling and just scale it a bit down to start with. And create another solid. Okay. Uh, let's see, scale it down, move it down, mm -hmm. scale it even lower, yeah, like that. And then we're going to double click to create rectangular mask, as you can see. And then we're going to add a vertex there in the middle and on the sides there sorry there mm -hmm. and there yeah like that okay and then so with the mask selected we go to effect gener generate stroke okay tell it to be all masks we go to layer solid settings it needs to be now a completely black solid okay yeah and then we of course are going to push up the brush size perfect and then i'm going to move this mask here upwards hmm. although it seems of course to cut itself off there you see that there eh? let's just go to let's see let's see the mask itself if we scale it up mm -hmm. Pick the control points there and begin to move them down again. Just as long as, of course, the top one gets to have its head upwards. Um, let's just zoom in, of course, because we need clarity here. Making sure, of course, that these are more or less straight, you know. Yeah, this is looking good. In fact, we can do this delete vertex tool and wipe these out of course that and that great and then have that main one there yeah in the picture so that we can see where it cut off and then of course now we can add them back again there and there sorry there mm -hmm. and move these of course again downwards yeah like that that looks accurate to me yeah that's fine and then of course the first one here select the scaling tool just scale it down a bit its mask needs to be again spread out a bit more okay and it needs to be thinner 
like that and perhaps a bit wider again sorry let's bring the mask under control there in, in there yeah main composition again we have to close these off that we don't need anymore main comp and bring the additional plate to the plate mm -hmm. scaling tool and of course this is going down perfect and of course shift and move it downwards and scale it further down mm -hmm. unlock the scale and just scale them sorry not like that but on the X axis yeah just to make them of course wider yeah it's looking great okay and then we are now going to create another layer let's call this one here target track or tracker okay because it should be able to track the target once it's found and for this we need the lock on layer for it so go to the target tracker and then we're going to drag the lock on layer of course in here and then on top of that we're going to need a solid layer new solid mm -hmm. and yeah make a comp size hit ok yeah select the scaling tool and we just need to scale it down a bit mm -hmm. create a rectangular mask for it effect generate stroke okay yeah give it that square feel great and then we're going to take this lock on layer here and just get it a bit outwards not too much yeah and then just get it we're going to unlock the scale here just want to scale it a bit wider like that so that the edges of course are evenly thin yeah great okay and then let's just lock it on now this these two here need to be kind of independent from each other in other words uh the rectangle will move and drag this block here with it but the block will be able to rotate on its own in other words if we press r we should be able to you see that eh? to rotate this of course on its own but as you can see of course it's cutting off from the edges so let's undo that and so instead let's first parent this to that select the scaling mm -hmm. scale this down now if we try and rotate this okay you see that now everything of course will be in full view yeah so this is how we need it to be set up okay okay mm -hmm. as you can see of course this layer here is not transparent unfortunately so press mm to bring up the mask and of course we need to subtract it there we go that way of course yeah it's like that okay back to the main comp of course and target tracker change the party scale it down of course okay okay yeah and it, it can even be there for now okay and let me show you what I meant uh, if we go now to the target tracker and uh, yeah if we try to rotate this layer here the lock on if you try to rotate it like that if you go to the main comp now aha you can see of course it become twisted and that's ex exactly of course how we want it and also the the primary ring here remember we've parented the secondary ring to it so let's just scale it down a bit yeah like that we're trying to create room here for everything of course to fit properly the target sorry the additional plate here then can be moved a bit up yeah like that okay yeah okay or there could actually be a secondary option because this might need to be animated in the, uh, independently like as we are working through the scene so instead let's do the following we're going to reset the rotation mm -hmm. select the let's do this we're going to create a new lock on layer just call it 
lock on rotator okay back to the let's see where were we back to the target tracker select the lock on layer go to edit cut okay and then let's go to the lock on lock on rotator go to edit paste yeah so that of course it's an individual object we now go to the main comp mm -hmm. and then let's see delete the target tracker for now let's just go back to the target tracker select the scaling tool and yeah just scale it back to where it was 100% okay and then let's go to the main comp of course and then we're going to bring the target tracker yeah okay don't worry if it's too big for now uh, scale it down okay and then of course we're going to bring the lock on rotator like that again scale it down okay and then most importantly is that the lock on tracker must be smaller than it and let me just bring it yeah the lock on rotator must be parented to the target tracker so that of course when you select the target tracker now you see that it follows it of course everywhere now if we try to rotate the lock on rotator you see that uh -huh, of course it should be able to rotate nicely on its own so please go ahead and save your scene mm -hmm. so let's just scale it down a bit more you see that of course when you scale it down it follows with the, the square that surrounds it you see that's beautiful and then up next we're just going to create some random text to hold some information so let's call it text let's get a folder called text and in here of course we're going to create a composition here called text one okay and yeah in here this way we create our texts of course for instance um, Henry the Jedi presents mm -hmm. so this could be our starting text presents okay and let's see composition composition settings the height is a bit ridiculous so reduce it to five three hundred or so okay mm -hmm. yeah make sure the text is always in the middle of course composition settings again okay select the text just scale it down a bit okay because there has to be a solid behind it so layer new solid mm -hmm. okay let's move it down press t for its transparency sorry for its opacity settings and just reduce it down a bit okay go to layer solid settings its color just needs to be adjusted a bit to something like a whitish gray or even a light blue you know something like that okay let's go to the main comp and bring our text one layer mm -hmm. scale it down of course and of course it's a bit too dull because the sides are too perfect let's go back to our text layer select our solid uh, just move it scale it down at first mm -hmm. double click to create the rectangular mask tool and then of course we need to add we need to add a mask we need to add a, a side there yeah and there okay and then we're going to remove by selecting the delete vertex tool so we need to delete that see that that way of course our file here looks a bit more interesting mm -hmm. and let's see yeah effects generate another stroke yeah, just make it a bit bigger like that great okay and I think let's go to effect generate ramp just to make it look nicer you know and yeah let's see yeah the starting ramp can be our light blue that we had or purple or whatever color that you choose really it's all up to you yeah, depending of course on which one best displays our text 
and clearly it seems because our text has to be black in color so we go to window character so to ease its readability that's what we've got to do of course okay well this one here okay let's just swap the colors around yeah much better yeah much better okay perhaps it should even be at an angle nah it's fine like that okay main comp mm -hmm. uh, press s of course and scale this baby here down and move it of course closer to where it will eventually need to be and of course its parent 2 must be the target tracker so we're going to change the parent here to the target tracker now if the target tracker ever moves of course aha you can see of course it will be taking the text with it see that eh? mm -hmm. see this is going to be quite interesting let's just go back to our text again window character I believe ours needs to be made bold yeah well this can be bold and italic great main comp yeah it's looking really interesting okay and then uh, let's see back to our text one layer select all the layers in there edit copy make a new composition call it texts 2 okay go to edit paste of course mm -hmm. now what do we present well Henry the Jedi presents operation lock on okay brilliant I believe this should be quite interesting to our viewers <laughs> operation lock on whoa <laughs> if you miss this movie oh my goodness I don't think you'll be forgiven eh? <laughs> let's see does the stroke still have any effect it seems not yeah because of the ramp effect if it was moved down yeah yeah, so we, we should just move the stroke effect down for it to have any impact. Back to the text O1 as well. Of course, the same treatment needs to be given to it. Stroke moved down. Price size increased. Okay. Back to the main comp. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we bring text 2 to the mix what happens scale it down mm -hmm. yeah, you see how cool it looks already yeah? again we're going to link it to the target tracker of course target tracker you see that uh-huh it's the one of course which is going to carry them through okay an additional effect that can be added is something like stylize, glow, not too much of course, glow intensity must be reduced a bit. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it's looking very good so far, okay. Alright, it's all looking good and it's about time of course we brought in our pictures here to make things even more interesting. To do that, we go to File, Import, File, and as you can see, of course, I have a reference images folder in which I went through the trouble of getting all these images for you guys. Please bear in mind, uh, they the still maintain the copyrights from the owners who produce them, so you know you don't have the right to put them in a in a video presentation or anything like that. Okay, if you want to do that, please you must Google for royalty-free images. You know. Now enough of these, uh, enough of those laws and issues. <laughs> Back to our tutorial. What I went uh, through actually was mainly pictures of uh, cities covered by sand and sea because they are more beautiful to the eye, especially when seen through satellite. And of course, there's none better looking than Dubai. Of course, uh, there we have the world's only seven-star hotel, shaped in the shape of a sail. You know. And I must say, hmm, my dream is really to come to Dubai and stay there actually and work for 
some time there. So don't be surprised if you spot someone looking like me in the next few months or few years to come. <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful Dubai. And then we also have these pictures here. Mm -hmm. You see what I told you? When a city is surrounded by, or a piece of land is surrounded by the ocean, it's truly beautiful for the eye to see. So we have clouds there, you know, above the ocean. This is the Persian Gulf, okay, or the Arabian Gulf, or whatever you call it. Over here we have, hmm, none other than beautiful Australia. You see how beautiful it looks, eh? <laughs> so you have dryness, and then you have forests surrounding the edges of the coastal lines. And of course, you have the big blue sea surrounding everything else. And again, here we have Dubai. Mm -hmm. And again, the sail like structure. And here, oh, we have the whole world. <laughs> oh, yeah. From America to Africa to Europe, Asia. And you know, the list goes on, really. Yeah, this is a very good picture really to use especially of course when you're setting things by zooming from outer space okay mm -hmm. unfortunately this city doesn't have much going on with it uh, let's see yeah we have this industrial section here of Dubai mm -hmm. yeah we have an industrial section here as well Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked a lot the detail going on in the sand dunes. Eh? It's so beautiful to see from the sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a more modern city, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B please bear in mind the the technique we are going to use is the fact that if we are very far away, that's when we can actually begin to zoom into things a bit closer. Okay, this is the city of Rome, as you can see, of course there. The Colosseum. Okay, so if you are if you are staying in Italy, you know I can only say hello to you. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to select each of these pictures here, and yeah, Let's see, yeah, we're selecting each of these pictures here, so that we can see, of course, which one looks best. So select them all and then hit open. No, After Effects refuses to load them, so here's what you're going to do. We're going to do the following file. Import file again. Just select these first, the first four. Hit open. Okay, you can see it begins to bring them in. I'm going to create a folder there called uh, Satellite Images. Okay, and yeah, let's go up and drag these guys in like that. Now, of course, they all belong in the one folder. And of course, we have to bring in more images. Import file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's bring the rest which didn't make it. Remember, we are selecting many of them so that we can see, of course, which ones will look best. Again, After Effects refused to bring this in. I'm going to try to bring them in again. Perhaps one of them was, a f was not a, a JPEG or PNG for that matter. So. Just selecting again. Oh my goodness. Just refuses to bring them in. File, import again. Okay. What if we only want footage files? Ah, anyways. That's a JPEG. That's a JPEG. Hmm, let's see. How about these? Hmm, that's it, huh? I'm just going to bring what I know might work. In, for that matter, we might even actually open the the reference images folder, open a new window, so that of course we can drag them ourselves. Yeah, drag them in here. There we go. Much better. Okay, and then after having done that, we are going to scroll down all the way to the bottom there. And this is of course when we're going to select every picture here from there to that. I'm holding down shift of course on the keyboard and of course we drag them in the composition below everything else. Let's put it there. Just move it, move this layer here on top of them, on top of the pictures, okay? 
because the pictures really have to be at the back end there we go okay of course already you can tell what is going on okay now after having done that this is now of course time to clean things up and put things accordingly we're going to start by resizing each of these layers here so we're going to select from the last one to the one before the upper one and let's go ahead and hide them okay no no sorry my mistake let's just reveal them uh, let's see which picture must come first okay so as you can see we're going down the list selecting which one is the most appropriate one to start with and I can tell you already it has to be the earth because it's a global image and remember the scene is supposed to start from outer space so select the earth press s to bring up the scaling and of course we're going to scale it down never mind if your pc gets a bit slow because these pictures are very high resolution okay yeah there we go that's the earth to start with and of course that means earth must come on top of everything else okay now which picture will follow well it will have to be of course a close-up of a region not just a city but an entire region okay uh hmm, i don't unfortunately i don't have many pictures of australia so i'm going to hide it uh arabian peninsula you know really this depends on which pictures you came across on the internet you know as you can see of course i'm simply using pictures which i came across that are easier to use okay so for me the next picture to follow will be the arabian peninsula okay so it will come after the the earth satellite image okay so i'm going to hide that for now as well let's see this picture here just says arabia hmm i think i might actually use it instead of the arabian peninsula let's see which one looks better yeah the, the previous one of course so clearly this picture here goes away because this one is much more richer in color mm -hmm. now after that happens let's see okay this one is a map of africa and obviously the arabian peninsula is somewhere up there okay this is just a personal preference don't worry you can use any pictures of course okay so yeah for me this is the next picture to follow okay now after that of course we have to zoom in into something uh, let's see preferably an industrial area also uh, let's see mm -hmm. i think that's the one we want to go for dubai hotel yeah that's the one okay yeah okay so that's the one to follow next after yeah somewhere there okay so this is the order in which i'm going to arrange my so basically it starts with the earth and then we'll see this side of the world here yeah, which is closer to the arabian peninsula and then of course we will get to the actual arabian peninsula and then we'll end up in dubai aha what a romantic journey yeah <laughs> okay let me just see yeah okay uh yeah perfect so in other words of course all these other pictures we don't really need except and the one of the industrial area let me just find it we might even actually use this one this one is los angeles Mm -hmm. as you can see of course i'm um, using quite a combination of lots of cities just to get you know the right feel okay so yeah, i think we'll be using los angeles or yeah this area here it's industrial it's very big as you can see trying to squash it in takes a bit of memory no but maybe no okay we might use this just you know in case we don't have something better to show let's put it there okay hide that uh, let's see which picture is this oh that's the other side of dubai okay let's scale it down a bit all right 
Mm -hmm. And let me just confirm whether there was. Oh, yeah. This picture here is also beautiful. Okay. But it has markings on it, unfortunately. And then we have quick bird. Oh, yeah. We have that picture, there, of course. Okay. So yeah, let's turn our the layers that we're gonna be using on again, starting with the earth of course. Mm -hmm. And whatever that we want to follow next. Yeah, okay. Please of course save your scene. I'm saving incrementally. Okay. We're going to kick off things with a proper color correction for our footage because right now mm -hmm, this is too clean for our liking. So I want to make it a bit more, you know, dirty. <laughs> But first, of course, let's close off these areas here, these open compositions for now, because we want to focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah, we just want the main comp composition opened up. Okay, great. Now, we're going to go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Okay. And then we're going to drag it all the way down so that it sits on top of the first map there. So in other words, this layer will enable us to color correct our footage without affecting, of course, the controllers. Okay. So of course now we go to effect, color correction, CC toner. Mm -hmm. And by applying it at once already, of course, you can tell the look and feel changing. Now this depends on you, but for my liking, I really like it when it's this kind of bluish color. Mm -hmm. You see how how what it does to the footage. Yeah? It really makes it even more, you know, much more interesting. Of course, you can decide to keep colors up to a certain extent. And uh, and then of course on top of this, you need to bring out the colors a bit. So we go to effect, color correction, levels. Yeah. And of course, this is where we can apply some interesting. Uh, color toning effects you know it's other we may want to hush hush in things or make them softer okay depends on you of course and then to see the impact it has on the other layers well try to hide the earth map you can see of course uh -huh, some areas may look washed out while others of course may look proper of course you can always turn this on or off just to check whether what you're doing is right okay so I'm just turning on and off the layers so that we can see for ourselves the impact that the adjustment layer is having on them. See that? That's before when everything is nice and clean, you know. And when you turn on the adjustment layer, uh -huh, you can see, of course, it's much, much more interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Again, this is before. This is with the adjustment layer and this is without it. You see, when it's without it, it looks kind of too ordinary, you know. So that's why we're keeping, we, are, we, are, we that's why we've applied our adjustment layer. Okay, let me just turn back on our layers again. All right. This, of course, you can adjust at any one time, depending, of course, on how you want your footage to be colored. 